Great. From the preceding videos, we now know exactly what the gradient of cost is. With that understanding, in this video, we dig into what it means to descend the gradient in more detail than was previously possible. Recall yet again from preceding videos in this machine learning foundation series that we can define machine learning as this four step process. So step one, we have the forward pass, our inputs, our model parameters give us some estimate, y hat. In step two, we compare that estimate with some true known output y to calculate some cost C. And then in step three, we calculate the partial derivative of cost. And in step four, we actually adjust C. So in a little bit more detail, step three is really determining the gradient of cost C with respect to our model parameters M and B. So this is now something that in the preceding couple of videos, we determined in extreme detail from partial derivative rule first principles how to calculate this gradient of cost with respect to all of our model parameters you know so we're moving forward now with our simple regression model where we're fitting a line with just two parameters slope and y-intercept to some data points and yeah in the preceding videos we figured out exactly how to do that with partial derivative calculus so we have our gradient of cost. We know exactly what that is. Now in step four, we need to descend that gradient. So previously I have been describing that gradient descent in a univariate sense where we just have one parameter. So this could be M or could be B, but that isn't very realistic. Even the simplest models like our single line model with a slope and a y-intercept, even that model has two parameters. So this univariate idea of having a single parameter uh, on our cost curve that we're descending and making our way by repeating our machine learning process. So, you know, determining the gradient at a given point based on the parameter and then adjusting in this case by determining that the parameter and the cost are positively correlated. We can see that by adjusting the parameter downward slightly, we will be at a slightly lower cost. And we repeat that process again and again and again. Here we see again, okay, there's a positive relationship, a positive slope between my parameter and cost. And if I adjust my parameter slightly downward, then that will result in a downward movement in cost as well. And we continue that process until we make our way here. At this point, the gradient of cost with respect to our parameter P is zero. And in a lot of cases, you know, using some other tricks that we'll talk about in more detail in subject eight of this machine learning foundation series on optimization in which we will get into all of the very specific mathematics and tricks around gradient descent. But for now, it suffices to say that in a lot of circumstances, getting to this point where the slope of cost with respect to P is equal to zero is the point in the curve where cost is minimized. Okay, but this has all been with one parameter. And as we've just discussed, even our very, very simple line model has two parameters, slope and y-intercept. So the gradient of cost with our two parameter model with one parameter slope, another parameter, the y-intercept, it looks a lot more like this. So we have this three-dimensional cost curve where based on the random M and B values that we initialize our model with, at the beginning of training, we'll find ourselves somewhere on this cost curve. And our objective is to find the point where cost is minimized. Now you might've been wondering about this particular cartoon here. So the mascot for the first book that I wrote, a book called Deep Learning Illustrated, we have a recurring mascot in that book that's a trilobite. And so to make this concept of descending a gradient uh, kind of tangible, I had the illustrator of the book, Agley Bassins, draw a trilobite on this cost curve. And this trilobite is blind, so he's wearing sunglasses, and is also trying to find his way home. He's hiking in the mountains, which is why he has a backpack on. And so he's trying to find his way to home, and his home is the lowest point in the valley of cost. And so our trilobite can't see, right? And he's blind. But what he can do is he can stand at the point that he's at. So he starts at some random point based on the randomly initialized parameters, in this case, M and B. 
and he can tap around with his cane in all the directions around him. And he can determine that, okay, if I make a step this way here, that is going to correspond to a reduction in cost. This spot here is lower than any of the other spots immediately around me. And then when the trilobite moves to this spot, it has a new M and B coordinate, and it can, from that new coordinate, determine the slope at that point, and again, take a step in a direction of lower cost until repeating that process, our four-step machine learning process that involves, in step three, calculating the slope in this many-dimensional space, and in step four, taking a step in the direction of lower cost by adjusting our model parameters, eventually repeating that loop over and over and over again, we make our way to this point of minimizing cost. And at this point, our model will fit the data points as well as it possibly can. <laughs> so we have a model with two parameters, and I can have an illustrator draw that in three-dimensional space. But many machine learning models have hundreds or thousands or big deep learning models can have millions or billions of model parameters. And well, beyond this diagram here, where we have just two parameters and cost as the vertical axis, it becomes very, very difficult to illustrate, you know, having three parameters and what the cost curve would look like. Our mind can't really picture that. But these concepts are still the same. To a machine, it doesn't matter whether we have two dimensions or three or a thousand or a billion. The descending of the cost curve is the same mathematical process. Cool, so let's, as usual, jump to a hands-on code demo to start bringing this idea of descending the gradient of cost to life. Again, if you've been following along with all of the videos in this Machine Learning Foundation series, then you might already have the Subject 4 Calculus 2 Jupyter Notebook up, in which case we're currently in the gradients of cost with respect to model parameters section. And in the most recent videos, we worked through this single point regression gradient notebook, and now we're onto this batch regression gradient notebook. So you can open that up here, or if you haven't been following the videos along sequentially or you close this notebook or whatever, you can make your way to github.com slash John Crone slash ML Foundations, go into the notebooks directory, and from there, you can open up the batch regression gradient notebook. So again, as with all of the Jupyter notebooks in my Machine Learning Foundation series, all of the code in this batch regression gradient notebook has been executed. So you're welcome to simply follow along in GitHub and look at the statically executed code. However, I do recommend for the sake of practice to open this notebook up in Colab. And when you do that, you can execute all of the code interactively along with me. As usual, we are going to want to go to the edit menu and clear all outputs, which will mean that all of the code that we had executed in the static view is no longer executed and we can uh, run it ourselves for the first time. All right, so having cleared our outputs, we're otherwise good to go. In this notebook, we will expand on the partial derivative calculus of the single point regression gradient notebook that we were working with previously in order to calculate the gradient of mean squared error on a batch of training data. And so this is a much more realistic situation. We don't typically perform gradient descent on single data points. That's not making the best use of the compute and RAM resources that we have on a given machine. So typically we grab batches of our data and perform gradient descent on that. So we're going to need to do some new derivations. So previously we had calculated the partial derivatives of a quadratic cost with respect to our model parameters. So now we're gonna to have to go back in a little bit and calculate the gradient with respect to mean squared error. We'll get to that in a moment. And also in this notebook, after we do that, we'll be able to visualize gradient descent in action. And that'll be pretty cool. I, I really enjoy doing that. So we're going to need PyTorch and Matplotlib for those plots that are coming up. And so we're using the same data as we had in the single point regression gradient notebook and in a few other examples so far. So again, our inputs are, well, both the inputs and the outputs are made up values. 
The inputs are supposed to be the dosage of an Alzheimer's drug, a treatment for Alzheimer's, and then these values are the forgetfulness of our patient. So generally speaking, the more, the higher the dosage of Alzheimer's drug, the less forgetful our patient is. All right, so put those data in memory. We've got our regression model, m times x plus b, and we randomly initialize our two parameters, slope m and y-intercept b, with random values. And these are the same quote-unquote random values that we have been using in all of the examples so far. You're welcome to change those, but if you leave them that way, you'll be able to get the same numbers as me as you work through the notebook. So step one is our forward pass yet again. Previously, our forward pass in the single point regression notebook, we had just a single data point x, but here we're working with all eight of our data points. So we have our vector of x's, and so we pass that whole vector in, and so we get back a vector of y hats, of eight estimates of what y should be. And we can now, in step two, compare these y hats with the true y values to calculate cost C. And so as in the regression in PyTorch notebook that we worked through a little while ago in this machine learning foundation series, we'll use mean squared error, which averages quadratic cost, the cost that we used in that single point regression example, across multiple data points. So we have the quadratic cost here, and then the rest of this, the summation and dividing by n, is simply to get the average quadratic cost, which we call mean squared error. So defining mean squared error in code here, you can confirm to yourself that I did it correctly. And then we can calculate cost by passing in our eight y hat values and our eight y's as well. And we get a mean squared error of about 20. Nice, so in step three, up until now, anytime we've been using mean squared error cost, We've been relying on the PyTorch automatic differentiation library to calculate the gradient of cost with respect to our model parameters. So we can simply call the backward method on our cost C, and then boom, we have our cost, our mean squared error cost with respect to the model parameter M, which comes out to about 36, and also our mean squared error with respect to the model parameter B, which comes out to about six. And Right, so just as we did in the single point regression notebook, we're now in the next video going to spend time working through by hand to derive del C, del M, and del C, del B ourselves using partial derivative first principles.